uh, and then we go to the broadcast as we talk through the chat function as well, please. So just bear with us uh, and we'll be with you very shortly. Thank you. So again, just a reminder, the first 10 minutes are live, the second 10 minutes will be embargoed. If you could use the chat function, if you want to come in and ask a question, please, we will go through the order, uh, similar to the chat this morning. Uh, Antonio Dunne, who is on standby, his Munster jersey is gone, I see. <laughs> So, good morning everyone. Uh, Stephen is with us now, so we will open the questions please. Stephen, good morning to you. Antonio Dunne, who is first up. Thanks very much, Carl. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, how are you doing? Um, so far, the last few days, I'm sure they've been really interesting for you, but um, has there anything surprised you that you weren't expecting over the last few days? Not really, no. I think we, we've had to manage, um, obviously, we didn't probably anticipate that so many players would play 90 minutes last Saturday in pre-season. So because then they're match day plus two when we had them on Monday um, and because the match is on tours, we've had to modify our training loads. So we've had to sort of plan that carefully. There's no point in trying to come in and do too much too soon with everyone. I think we, you know, we've got to make sure players stay fit and uh, can peak on tours day in the best possible, possible condition. So, well, we've done some work. Ideally, we would have wanted to do more, but you can't you can't force that uh, between a few days training, Monday and Tuesday. So that's 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 where we are. In as far as you can over a short few days, do you feel that the group has bonded already? Well, to be fair, I think the majority of the group, uh, you know, a lot of the squad. Obviously, there is a lot of changes and uh, radical change from the last squad, but the majority of uh, Players that are in the squad, they seem like great people. So I wouldn't take any great credit for bonding or for bonding with the group. I think there's a lot of really good people in the squad, uh, a lot of humility, and uh, I think that's that's very evident. And uh, I think that that's you, that's very evident. All of the staff have commented that. All of the members of the staff have commented on that. And the players, there's great humility in the in the group. This group of players. You must have felt, I'm sure, that there's a, a huge goodwill towards you and the squad. Um, but that's created a sort of an air of expectation as well, hasn't it? That uh, people are, are hoping, but maybe even expecting that you're, you're going to start well. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> you don't mind that. You know, that's OK. You know, come to it that I think uh, Bulgaria have had, since, since the new coaches come in, they've had two very good results, you know, different they were quite open in that in campaign, conceded goals, trying to, you know, uh, quite expansive, but left themselves open. Um, you know, in the last two games, they beat the Czech Republic in the Euro qualifier. Czech Republic have, have qualified for the Euro, so that was a really impressive win, 1 0. And they played Paraguay and lost 1 0. So those two games were two good performances, and they only conceded one goal in the two games. So, and, and Paraguay are a good team. And I think, uh, so it was interesting for me to see that and they're very well drilled, uh, very compact as a team and they've got, you know, speed in their attack. So it'll be, it'll be, we'll have to earn anything we get in, in Sofia for sure. Now a number of your players, Shane Duffy, the latest one to, to be involved in, in moves, right, as you, as you gather. He's gone to Celtic, you had Matt Doherty, of course, and before that, Jeff Hendrick. Um, has that been a bit of a distraction? Has it been a talking point among the group? No, not really. No, well, I think uh, it's been that's been going on for a couple of weeks with Shane. There's been a lot of interest in Shane, and and rightly so. You know, uh, such a commanding presence as a centre centre back, and he's such, um, you know, such a such stature in both boxes. You know, so I think uh, there's been a lot of interest. So 
that his decision has been to go to Celtic. I think uh, so. We, we certainly wish him well with that. Okay, thanks very much, Stephen. Thanks, Carl. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Paul. How you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, obviously, you want to win tomorrow, but what is the priority for you? Is it winning full stop, or do you want to win with a bit of style? Does the manner of the win matter to you? Um, it's only the first game, you know. I think it's only for, we've only been in for two days, you know, training. So, I think um, for us, we're looking at it's on many levels, really. I think the first thing is that the Nations League potentially gives you a World Cup playoff, potentially gives you a chance to be promoted to Group A. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, you've got to win the group, which which is big, uh, you know, not easy, you know. So, first and foremost, we'd like to try and win the game if we could. I think on that level, that's, that's important for us. And there's also the bigger picture of... Um, Slovakia game in October and with a view to that as well so I could say to you well each game is in isolation and you just focus on that game and, and we look at that when it comes but there is an element of truth in that but also you have to see the wider the wider view. we are building towards that as well and um, so on both fronts you know you want to win the game because every international game is is of significance especially competitive game is very important and I think uh to uh, to have a good start in the Nations League group, you would feel would uh, help the confidence, of course. But you know, Bulgaria, I'm sure, feel the same. You know, they've had a, a very good win. The last competitive game, they beat the Czech Republic at home one nil. So I'm sure they feel likewise. They feel that they'd like to start with a win at home. So mm. we have, have to work really hard to earn earn the victory. Mm. Have you told the squad yet the starting eleven, Stephen, or how do you approach this in, in the in the lead up to to a match? No, I haven't, and uh, we'll do that in due course. But um, no, we've been working over the two days on how we play, um, and uh, but no, I have not not picked a team yet. Okay, so you can't tell us if uh, Seamus Coleman and Matt Doherty would start tonight or tomorrow night, can you? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Hi, Stephen. Just on that, uh, I don't know, is there any injury update or if everybody who travelled is fully fit and available for selection? Yes, every, everyone uh, who travelled is... That's right, Nathan. They are they're fully fit and available for selection. That's right. Listening to Jeff Hendrick earlier and Robbie Brady over the last couple of days, they've said that you've been quite clear with them about what's expected and there's been a lot of information about different roles within the team. It has only been a couple of training sessions. Do you get the sense, though, from your team meetings that the message of a different, maybe more, what we might call a more progressive style of football has, has got across to the players that they will go onto the pitch tomorrow fully aware of what you expect from them? Or is it, is it too soon? <laughs> now, I think, um, listen, they're all good players who are playing at a high level and they're, you know, they've, <clears throat> they're used to changing and managers and coaches at the different clubs. I think... Um, you know, they're used to, used to sort of having changes within their club environment. This is an international environment. It's different. Um, but they're all adaptable. So tactically, they're adaptable. You know, they're intelligent people and they can take stuff on board. <clears throat> radically, you know, you're not going to radically change everything in two days. I think that's not realistic. But uh, we, want to, we want to play with confidence. You know, that's important. We want to play with confidence. And we want... Um, to have the balance of the team right so that so that we can be creative and create chances you know I think the balance of the team is important and um, we we like to, we want to have uh, you know um, speed in our attack as well it's very important that we have speed in our attack that we, we we're a real threat when we need to be Ordinarily, if you were going to somewhere like Bulgaria, we talk about you know the, the heat of the battle and the packed stadium. It's not going to be like that. But you talk about wanting experienced players for those sort of situations. And we've spoken a lot about the likes of Jason Malumbi and Adam Ida coming through. But somebody like James McLean or Shane Long, who's been around the block and probably having to listen to these conversations, how have you found working with them? And what sort of role do you think they can have over the coming couple of years? Well, I think international football is changing. And I think... 
and every, we all have to adapt and the players have to adapt because never before has there been three matches in a window and that will become the norm in the future possibly you know because looking at the next two windows um, in October November speculation about that in March as well so if that if that if that is becoming you know um, more frequent you know not everyone can play all of the games and I think that's when you definitely need your squad and that's if we one of the things that I would say is that when we did play some 11 v 11 in training um, you know you can see that you know there's not really a disparity in quality overall you know that, that we're two very competitive 11s and that's that's going to be important over the next year as their intention is that we play a lot of games but in order for us to do that and, I, and when I say it in an in amount of games I mean a record amount of games in, in, you know historically but in order for us to do that we have to be successful so um, you know we'll have to we'll have to um, obviously you know um, do well over the next few few weeks and, and months and, and uh, that's that's what we're trying to do Sorry, just one final one then. Could you see yourself, regardless of the result tomorrow night, picking a very different team then on Sunday compared to Thursday because of the amount of games the players have to play and, and wanting a fresh team out there? Not necessarily. I don't really. I think you need to have uh, some kind of... Um, you know, you need to have... You know, if the teams to evolve as well, you need some kind of consistency of selection. Uh, whether you can achieve that... In, you know, depends. Players are in early in the season for them, and uh, we'll have to we'll have to judge that really after Thursday, in how they are physically. Um, so that that's an interesting question because because they're so early and they actually haven't played their first league game yet, and that's unprecedented. That is an interesting question. So we'll have to really review that based on the evidence we see and how how their bodies react, and then make decisions based on that. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, thank you. There's uh, two more questions in this section. The first one from David Spell. Hi, Stephen. Um, given the circumstances, would you consider this to be the biggest game of your career? And either way, do you have to approach it just like you've approached every other game in your career? If I, if I took time and probably reflected on that and thought about it in that way, there is... You know, there is no doubt that it is, but I haven't, uh, <laughs> I haven't had that period of introspection. I think, I think I'm just sort of very focused on the game itself, and I think that's that's um, the way I view it. I think uh, the game, look, we're we're just preparing the team the best way we can. All of the coaches, staff, um, you know, and you know, have been have been fantastic. Um, Keith Andrews and Damien Duff, Alan Kelly, you know, really terrific, and I think. Um, um, so we're just focusing really on the on the game itself, how we're going to play. Um, obviously, the challenge of playing in an empty stadium. Uh, some of the players have got a little bit used to that. Um, <laughs> we know it's not the same, you know, that the connection between supporters and players, uh, you know, brings the, the energy that brings. I think, uh, but I'm not looking at it from my own point of view. I'm looking at it, uh, you know, I don't have time for that, you know. I think of just we've just got to get ready to to try and uh, prepare the team and try and perform well. Thank you. Last question in this section is from Gavin, please. 